In a recent story, I was recounting the wonderful events of God working through one Bible verse to reach a whole family and those that they were reaching for the gospel. But I have a little side story, if you will, that is part of the grand narrative. This particular brother, as I mentioned, everyone in the family got saved except his old grandfather. And the grandfather was still proud in his religion. He ended up living with this brother. And one evening, the brother was out hearing ministry from another man who said that my father had two boys and one was a faithful believer and the other was a prodigal and I was the prodigal. And sometimes when I'd come home late in the evening from a party, uh, I would hear my father on his knees in the bedroom weeping and praying for my salvation. When my father died, among other things, he left me the chair where he used to pray and weep and his Bible. And there were times I wanted to open the window and throw the Bible as far as I could, but I couldn't do it. And finally one day, I sat down on that chair and I began to leaf through the pages of this Bible. And I came to one passage where the pages were stained with tears. And there was an actual hole right through the page where my father had continually been putting his finger at the verse that said, Thou shalt be saved and thy house. And he was pleading with God to save his boy. Well, the brother came home from that meeting and said to his wife, I have not been serious enough in my prayers for my old grandfather. I'm going to spend all night in prayer before I have to go to work tomorrow. And so he did. Well, the next day, about noon, his wife called him and said, you will not believe what I'm hearing coming from your grandfather's bedroom. He's crying out, blood of Jesus, have mercy. I'm a wicked sinner, a wicked sinner. Please save me. And this old man in his 90s finally put his trust in Christ and was baptized and came into the fellowship of the local church, would participate at the Lord's Supper. And people said, when I get to be an old man, I want to be like old Mr. Ayub. And you know, as we think of this particular story, we're reminded of the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians in the second letter to them. And he said, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. And he goes on to speak about the fact that we have been given the privilege of unveiling the gospel. Remember how in the previous chapter, he talked about how Moses veiled the glory that was reflected from his face. But we with unveiled faces behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. And so he says it's very important that we don't put a veil on the glory. That is, the character of God being revealed through his people. Because if our gospel is veiled, we're doing the devil's work. He says that um, the God of this age is blinding the minds of those who don't believe. Can you imagine such a thing? That uh, the devil can take a holiday if I'm veiling the glory, if I'm not allowing people to see the change of character within me that I have because of spending time with Jesus, then I'm doing the same work the devil's doing in hiding from them the glory of the Lord. And he says, if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. What a good thing it is in the morning to arm my mind with this thought that the people I'm meeting today who are not saved, they are perishing. They're in the process of perishing. And I have the power now, this ministry, of just letting Jesus out, just letting people see how wonderful he is, how forgiving he is, how gracious he is, how kind he is, how truthful he is, and how he can save them just like he saved us. So he says in verse 5, we don't preach ourselves. We're not showing people how wonderful we are. We're preaching 
Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. So we are at their service, and we are seeking to show them how wonderful Jesus is. So as we think of the people around us, we know they're not saved, we realize they're perishing, we have a wonderful ministry of simply reflecting heaven's glory into this dark world and showing people how wonderful the Lord Jesus is. We preach Christ Jesus the Lord. So may the Lord encourage our hearts. Here's a man who that evening was convicted of his need to be more serious in interceding on behalf of his grandfather, and God answered within 12 hours, and the dear man was saved. So this is a great opportunity to be strategic in the lives of people, laying hold of God to work in the hearts of people. And when we pray for the lost, we're not simply saying, Lord, please save this person. He might say, well, what do you want me to do? I sent my son to die. I sent my spirit into the world. What we want him to do is to resurrect the truth as it has already been sown in their hearts, to make them feel guilty of their sin because this is the work of the Holy Spirit, to convince them of sin, uh, to make them fear death, to be conscious of the danger that death is around the corner, to bring other people into their lives in a conspiracy of love who will show Christ to them. There are lots of things we can pray that God has promised that he can do. And so may the Lord help us to become fellow servants with God in this great work and to be bond servants for Jesus' sake, to be at the service of lost people to reflect the glory of Christ, to show his character by the way we treat people and the way we show our seriousness in praying for them.